Today's episode is brought to you by the folks over at SeatGeek, the best and easiest to use ticket platform out there. They take the confusion out of buying tickets using a 0 to 10 scoring system and a green is good, red is bad color rating system so you and your loved ones get the best deal possible. So whether it's going to see our beloved Red Legs at Great American Ballpark, the Bengals over at Paycor, FC Cincinnati, one of the area college teams, or pretty much anything in between, use promo code RIVERFRONT at checkout and receive $20 off your first order. Click the link in the show notes to download the app and get started. That's Riverfront, one word, for 20 bucks off. Well, Ben's here on the other show today, so I have to go, Hello, everybody! What up, what up? What's going on? Should, should we just do the whole thing like we do on Sunday nights? Oh, yeah. Let's hit it. Let's right. hit it. My name is Tim Daniel. His name is Ben Brown. And his name is Parker Fields. And welcome to late. I mean, welcome to NBA Friday. Part of the Riverfront U podcast. So we're part of the Riverfront Sports Media Network, where you can hang out with us each and every day at patreon.com slash Riverfront Cincy. And of course, our wonderful friends over at Seeky can make this possible. But before we do get into our topics of the day, which we have some fun ones, we're going to talk about the disasters that are the Pistons, Wizards, and Spurs. We're going to talk about Paul George's resurgence of his career in our flashback and what he was before the injury as well, because that is like the uh, most, one of the most amazing career trajectories of all time. And of course, with Parker's idea for the draft this week, we are going to do our all time starting five of non all-star players with LeBron. What we mean by that is not like you can't like take Dwayne Wade with his Cavs run, right? Like we're talking about guys who never played an all-star game that played with LeBron. So that is going to be our draft tonight. But hey, I want to give a quick shout out real quick. If you head over to riverfrontcincy.com, you click that nice little shop tab in the side in the top right there. We got merch here at Riverfront U now. Yes, we do. I'm very excited about it. Um, So those who know me know very well that I am fascinated, enamored, obsessed slightly with the history of the Cincinnati Royals. Um, one of my all-time favorite what-ifs in my life was like, what if the Royals didn't go to Sacramento? They were going anyway. Um, so I went ahead and made our Riverfront U design as a tribute to the Royals. And for all the schools we cover, Xavier, Cincinnati, Northern Kentucky, Miami of Ohio, we have all the colorways on our website for sweatshirts, T-shirts, and hoodies. So go check it out. Grab some stuff. Show some love. Send it to us on the socials if you pick it up. We'll make some fun NBA Friday shirt. We're working. We're working on it. But, um, you know, the addiction show, as the Dawsons tell it, call me. And then also, one last little housekeeping thing before we get started on for uh, this week's show. Don't forget, Sunday night, 9 p.m. Eastern, late night Reds, me and Ben, and a whole lot of other people, Christmas song draft, baby. Christmas oh, song draft. Legit. Can't wait. We're also going to be joined by the three of us I went to Boone County High School. So we're going to be joined by another Boone County alum Sunday night, our good friend Jackson Lauman, former MLB scout, owner of DBAT uh, training in Hebron, Kentucky. He's going to come on and tell us about the Reds' options at number two in the 2024 MLB draft. So come check that out on Sunday. But you're here to talk about the National Basketball Association. And I guess we're going to kind of have like a a weird way to start it because it's not going to be a fun one. Um, Mm -hmm. But we're going to talk about three teams that are just an absolute disaster. And we're mm. going to try to take a wager on the, which of the two teams that are just chasing history for the wrong reasons is going to win a game first. Um, but I want to start with the Spurs because obviously they're the talk of the offseason in the sense that they got the most coveted prospect since LeBron James, right? And Victor Wembanyama. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a team that I think a lot of us, we knew they were going to be bad, right? Like we knew. It's just like, this is yeah. just, but did I think they were going to win three, be three and 22 bad? I don't know if this is the exact number, but it might as well be because they play the Lakers again tomorrow. But I do say that in the sense that um, when Benyama was pretty awesome last night in that Lakers comeback, like he, yeah. you know, they do lose because AD was incredible. Like Parker and I text each other all the time. Like if he just did this all the time, but um, when Benyama just has this awesome, awesome game to kind of get them back in it. And I'm sitting there thinking to myself as I'm watching this, I'm like, I'm glad the Lakers won, obviously, but if they had more NBA players, like NBA caliber guys, like a, an actual mm-hmm. point guard, because I think they actually have NBA guys on their roster. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
you know what I mean? Like I think Malachi Branham, NBA player, obviously Kelton Johnson, so the yeah. gold medalist. Um, yep. Trey Jones, I think is an NBA player. You know, yep. I don't really love Jeremy Sohan playing point guard, but I do think he's an NBA caliber player. Um, even though he puts ketchup on his pizza, Vassell's an NBA caliber. Vassell's definitely, he's, yeah. He's, he's just, just yeah. you got to work. His, his shot selection's horrible. He takes. If I was watching that game last night, and yeah, they would go on a run. They would score like three or four buckets in a row, and then Vassell would come down and shoot a uh, heavily contested fadeaway or something. And then Make it rain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every time he's like, yeah, he's just like he crosses he crosses the middle court line. He's like, chuck it exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, but. There's a lot to say about this team. And I think the one of the big things is obviously going to be this whole like weird point guard situation that I think is stunting them from being from growing. I knew that they knew that they were not going to win going into the year, right? We they knew like this is probably gonna be your we're just gonna build it up. But I don't think losing 19 games in a row is a good thing for your young talent. No, no. They're really gonna like take that and be like, yeah, we're learning. No, it, and here's the thing, and and if you go back, like even in the in the Spurs history, you know their last huge draft pick, of course, was Tim Duncan. Mm-hmm. And when, but you got to think about that. Duncan had David Robinson, he had Avery Johnson, he had Sean Elliott, he had all these guys around them. Yeah, they although they were bad, I mean, and you got to remember, David Robinson missed a lot of time the previous year. That's why they were bad. But that was why they tanked. You, Correct. That's what they, yeah, they did exactly that. They, they tanked, but, but they, they don't have like, and for better or worse, they just don't have any, any veterans there. Like it's all young guys trying to figure it out, you know, and, and to pop's credit, I mean, he's trying, but like, it's really hard when you don't have one, have a consistent point guard and two, you don't have any, any kind of veteran really leadership. I mean, your oldest guy maybe Devonte Graham maybe like it. I, I mean, I think it would be McDermott. McDermott. Yeah, oh yeah, they do have Dougie. Oh, yeah. They have Dougie. They do have McBuckets. But yeah, yeah. But like, you know, Dougie McBuckets <laughs> isn't. He's not a guy that's gonna come in and light it up. I mean, he'll give you some threes every once in a while, but he's not a guy that's gonna come in and give you twenty five and six or whatever like that. But you know, that team is is young, and I know they're trying to build around Victor. But man, he doesn't have a whole lot of pieces there. And I know they didn't expect to win this, lose this many games in a row, um, and they d- expected to win a little bit more. But um, it, it's a, just a different scenario uh, for them to have have that young stud and one Binyanama and not be able to put a whole lot around him. Yeah, and this team started off the season three and two, and they beat the Suns in back to back games. Yeah. And we we're like, oh shit! Mm-hmm. I mean. I don't think anybody was thinking playoffs, but we we're like, oh, they might win 35 games this year and be yeah. you know, decent, be a, you know, fighting for a play-in spot, maybe something like that. And then since then, like you said, 19 losses in a row is just unacceptable. That's like, that's not good for anybody's confidence. Uh, nobody thought they were going to be no. good, but 19, 19 losses in a row is crazy. And like, Kelton Johnson, honestly, has kind of disappointed me this season because last yeah. year it was looking like he was about to be an all-star level player and then he's mm-hmm. taking sure. a step back. And he's playing like he did in like his second season now again. And he's not like last year, I think, I believe, yeah, 22 points per game last year on pretty good efficiency too. Like he was a really good player last year. And they weren't nearly this bad last year. Right. That's like, what's like, shocking is they got right. the most coveted player in 20 years into a draft and they got worse. Mm-hmm. And, and you'd think they got better too because all their players aged another right, year. Right, right, right. Yeah. And it should be that should be the natural progression. And, it and they were been. this close to getting Austin Reeves. Yeah, <laughs> they were that close. Which yep. he's probably like, oh, thank God. But ah, <laughs> uh, dodge the bullet. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, but you really think the Lakers weren't gonna? I think the Lakers would have matched whatever the hell the number was. Honestly, no matter what it was gonna be, I think the Lakers would have matched it. I'm sure they would have, yeah. but he he like has talked. He's like, you know, he's like uh, San Antonio looked awfully interesting to me, like. <laughs> um, I don't, I'll say this. I know this is totally an out-of-pocket question, but I'm just going to ask it anyway. Um, has Pop lost it? Is it over? Like Belichick, you see this year, it's the end of Belichick, right? Like, is this the end of Pop? Um, gosh, I hate to say that. I like. It's I been don't such think so. A but... war- I mean, it's been such a wonderful run. I, I think you have to have Jimmys and Joes. I think you see that with the Patriots. I mean, they thought they had a quarterback of Meg Jones. And, you know, you let Tom Brady go, which 
good, bad, or indifferent. You know, that guy uh, won you a lot of football games, won you a lot of Super Bowls, and you changed the complete direction of your of your franchise by by letting him go, and he walks away, and you're thinking that it's and, – and I think a lot of times this happens where people think that it's it's the system – and the coach, and you still have to have Jimmys and Joes, man. Like, a, like guys that can go out there and perform. And and it's not pop system. It's not the way he coaches. It's not he hasn't lost the magic. But you got to have guys that can execute what you want to do all the time. And I think that they're so young that they're not able to do that on a consistent basis. The way pop is used to seeing teams do that. Yeah, I agree. I agree with you. And also something I feel like is underrated and kind of was the big downfall of this team. I think trading DeJounte Murray was a big deal, like yeah. culture wise, like because he was an adult in the locker room and he was, I mean, he's only 26 or whatever, but he was a little bit older and had established himself a little bit more. And I think that was a big deal. I mean, you look, it's yeah. been the same team damn near and they won 34 games two years ago and we're in the play in. And then last year is 22 games. And then this year it's three wins a quarter yeah. of the way over a quarter of the way through the season at this point. Yeah, yep. and I think you can't underestimate. That's a good point, Parker. You can't underestimate that that Murray was becoming and now is a superstar. So if you keep him there and you pair him with Wimbenyama, you you got him and you have another super superstar. That's a different team. I mean, that's a team that that you can put because you can go to Murray down the stretch and get big buckets. Yeah, you know, so I, I mean, you you move him out, that that changes the dynamic completely. He's also about to get his life a lot better because he's going to be moving on from Trey Young at the trade deadline because the Hawks yep. stink. Yes, they yep. stink very yep. much. Yep. I am excited to see how that shakes out. There's going to be like some teams going to get him, and it's going to be awesome. Unless it's mm-hmm. the Celtics, they can piss off. They don't. They don't need him. <laughs> yeah, they definitely don't need him. <laughs> um. I mean, I feel like he's going to be a tough person to move, though, at the trade deadline. I just like – because his contract is huge. His contract's huge, yeah. and it's how do you match – And he's a really like, good player. So, right, like, exactly. Like, like, the, like, I don't think the D'Angelo Russell, Rui Hachimura matches that. No, I agree. And I don't think Minnesota is going to give up a lot for him. I, and also, there's not many players that, like, are – are looking for like, I mean, obviously everybody wants a star guard, but he just seems like more of an off season trade to me than a trade deadline trade. I don't know. It's just like, I don't know how many teams are going to have a package for him ready for him at the deadline. You know, it'd be really awesome that he could get traded to. Uh, This is my new game. See how many people I can match the Orlando Magic as a trade candidate. I, I got a I got a question for you with like the current league right now though too. How many teams are actually going to blow it up in the East? Because all these teams aren't going to yeah. blow it up, but there's like five of them yeah. that need to, and that's not it's not realistic that all these teams are going to blow it up. They're not. Right. Like, one of the Raptors, Bulls, Hawks. Um, I'm trying to think else. Who Sounds like it's is? not going to be the Charlotte. Raptors because they're like, nope, Scotty Barnes is ours. You can't have them. Well, yeah. Well, who the – no. But, like, even if – there's no way in hell you trade Scotty Barnes. Oh, absolutely I've, not. I've been saying yeah. he's the best part in that draft class. I think he's better than Evan Mobley right now. At this he point. definitely is right now for sure. That's what – yeah. I've, I've been Probably saying will he's be because he's a better scorer. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I think Mobley's a better defender, but – um, I think Mobley has defense player of the year upside where Scotty Barnes has all NBA upside. So yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just different. But I also think Scotty Barnes has all NBA def- or all defense. Oh yeah, he does play. for sure. Yeah, he definitely does. Um yeah, oh, it's Ockham and yeah. Dennis yeah. Schroeder and OG and Anobi. Yeah. 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 I mean, if the Bulls like announce something where it's like they got DeJounte Murray for like whatever things are given up. Cool. Zach Levine. Yeah. <laughs> Sign me up. Sign me up. <laughs> if DeJounte Murray is the guy you build around for your future of your rebuild, I'm in. I've, I've yeah. seen so much stuff on like Twitter, TikTok. And oh, stuff God. The awful fans. Instagram Bulls. trades. No, just no. Just Bulls fans. Now, Kobe White is like the next coming of Curry. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, he's really good. Like, he looks really good. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, but like, I'm having fun. People are getting ahead of themselves a little bit. With right. Him. Yeah. All I'm right. having a lot of fun watching him. But yeah, I agree. All right. Let's. <laughs> Let's dive a little bit into 
uh, the other stink butt team of the Detroit Pistons. And mm. um, I really thought that we could kind of go here because this is a funny one too. Um, we've got the situation where Monty Williams two years ago was the head coach of the Phoenix Suns. And they yep. had a month where they did not lose. Yeah. Yep. Two years later, he's the coach of the Detroit Pistons and they've had a month. They have not won. <laughs> That's insane. Dude, that is insane to think about. And, and that he's, is he's always won because he was a coach of the uh, Hornets teams with Chris Paul too, right? So he's yeah. never been like on a horrible team. No, not like this. Yeah, no, no. way. This has got to be new for him. This has got to be interesting feeling. Yeah, it has to be. Um, I think what we're coming down to with this group is like, I like Cade. I like Jaron Duran. I like Thompson. Mm -hmm. I think those three guys are really fun, really good players, have a lot of upside. Um, I don't know. Cade's looking more and more, unfortunately, like he's getting closer to his ceiling until he learns how to shoot consistently. Uh, Which like at Oregon State, I was like, oh, yeah, dude, this guy's going to be awesome. He's the first pick in the draft for a reason. Like, it's going to be great. And like none of that is crossed. Not like Markel Fultz bad, like those years in Philly, but like worrisome, worrisome. Uh, Jay Nivey, the fact that it's like you're already looking at, does he need a fresh start somewhere? Why does Killian Hayes play 30 minutes every night? I, know. I don't it's understand terrible. it. It's terrible. And well, then, what yeah. what what does what information does he have on the Pistons? Like like <laughs> like what gets, does he, he have? He has some inside information on. <laughs> yeah, them. He, he, has gets, to... he get way too much run. Parker <laughs> and I still have James Wiseman stock somewhere. Stock. Oh uh, yeah, somewhere. I still think it's in a vault. I mean, Bogdanovich, whoever gets him is going to be lucky at the deadline. This guy's in his mid-30s and just casually is getting better in the NBA. He's becoming a mid-20s point-per-game scorer the last couple years. I mean, granted, they're horrible, but he's still very good. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. I I like him a lot. Um, Like I said, like, it's just – and I know, like, the thing is – and I listened to Simmons and Doc talk about this this week on uh, Bill's pod, and they kind of talked about, like, you know, they don't have they don't have closers. And it's yeah. like, okay, well, why'd you take Kate Cunningham first overall if he's not a closer? Why did you take him to win your games if he can't win your games? And I think that's a little harsh because obviously the team's right. not good. But I do think there is a reason to have that conversation as well. Um this is gonna be a hard team to sell the free agents, you know, who's gonna be like, Oh man, you guys just lost how many games? Like, all right, I'll go play there. I like Kate Cunningham and Jalen Duran. It's not gonna be a good sell. Um, you know, when they when they go into like the meeting, they have a free agent conversation. It's like, yeah, Killian Hayes plays thirty minutes a game. It's like for your your team or for like a team overseas. <laughs> my my question with it is like, there's no way Monty Williams just forgot how to coach. So like, right, right, it's, it's yeah. got to be the players. Like, there's no way he just forgot how to coach all of a sudden. Right. Like, it's got to be majority of the players. I'm not saying he's been perfect or anything, but like. I just don't think the roster fits right. in general. I mean, Asar Thompson is awesome. But Love him. Love him. He's shooting twelve percent from three or whatever. So like, yeah, he, that was kind of his knack and like, it, it's just, Lee too. Yeah. it's just <laughs> it, the roster. It, it, you're running out there with All Beef right. Stew, Jalen Duran, Amin Thompson, Killian Hayes, and Cade, and none of them could shoot. Right. If Bogdanovich is on the floor, nobody yep. can shoot. Like and they're no they're athletic. Don't get yep. me wrong. Like they're but like they're not athletic enough to beat you. you know no, I mean? they're not. Like, it's not like they're playing good defense, right? They're, like they're Orlando, like the worst defense. Like Orlando is no. athletic mm-hmm. enough to beat you. They might have a lot of guys who can't shoot, but they will run past you and they will play defense. Like I, that is not the case in Detroit. I, I still don't think though we've mentioned the worst team in the right. NBA. We're gonna uh, both of these teams have those losing streaks, but. Uh, well, I want to hear this. Do you guys think they're going to break the record, the Pistons? I, I personally do. Look at yeah, look at their schedule. I don't see who they get a win against. Yeah, it's like, are they going to break the record yeah. too? The Bobcats yeah. record for the, the worst record. winning, like the worst winning percentage in the season too? You think they're going to break that Bobcats record too? Kemba Walker's rookie year, I believe, or maybe it was his second year, one of the two. Uh, when the Bobcats were so bad. It was like Kemba probably. Walker and Corey Maggetti was like the... the <laughs> Like a like a old Corey Maggetti. Um It wasn't. Yeah, he was I super just, old. D- quick question: Do you think the Spurs then break the Pistons record? I feel like the Spurs <laughs> will get a win. They almost yeah. won last yeah. night. I yeah. feel like they'll get a win. They're gonna run into one. 
There'll be like some sort of urgency to get a win. Yeah, they will. Yeah. And then, like you said, so yeah. that brings us to the Wizards. And the thing about this is like, I understand tanking and all that stuff. <laughs> but this is not the tank draft. This is not when Benyama and we'll say what we were thought back in the summer, which looks a little different now. This is not when Benyama and Scoot Henderson and Brandon Miller. Um, this right. is like, and I, I like Ron Holland, but am I taking Ron Holland over any of those guys? No, not at all. No. Um, I like um, Alexander Saar. Am I taking him over any of those guys? No, I am not. No. Um, I'm not even going to say I, Matas. I don't like him much anyway as a player. Yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of him. And then like this draft also, you got the two Kentucky kids that were supposed to be top five picks that have just fallen in draft right. stock and now Reed Shepard's ahead of them in the draft stock. Like, yeah. so like a lot of guys that was, too. Yeah, a lot of the guys that were supposed to be like the game, like DJ Wagner was projected to be the number one pick for like seven years since he was like right. 10. And yeah. he just is not having a good freshman year. And like a lot of, it's like that with like a lot of guys in that draft are also falling off and their stocks going down. So that a lot of the guys you were excited for aren't even going to be top picks at this point. Right. Like you could sell me right now that you think Isaiah Collier is number one part in the draft and I'm going to listen to your conversation. Yeah. I wouldn't, yeah. No, I, I wouldn't disagree. And yeah. Um, yeah. And I understand why people are going to fall in love with the physicality of Ron Holland, but he's, um, there's a lot to left to be desired when you watch these G League games. Um, by the way, so, but yeah, the Wizards and Parker's Bay makes fun of them every week, and rightfully so. Um, this is the I team, have a, yeah. This I is the team that like really like traded for Jordan Poole, thinking like, yeah, we're gonna lose a lot, but he's gonna score oh, twenty nine points a game, and uh, they're like, we got Kuzma that we're gonna sign to be our franchise guy. Uh, oh, Kuzma has been awesome. He has been Kuzma awesome. has been awesome this season. I'm gonna give him his props. He is. Carried them to the three wins they have, or because of Kyle <laughs> seriously, he has a he free Kyle Kuzma get him on a contender. He could average free, twenty on a good free team. Kyle <laughs> I swear, Kuzma's Kuzma's not bad. I, I, I agree. I, I'm not dogging Kuzma whatsoever here. I'm just not saying that he shouldn't be your best player on your team. No, God no. But he could be a really good fourth option oh, on for a team, sure. like on yeah. a really good team, or a third option on. A really I mean, good we team. saw it before. He was the fourth option on a team. That won a title. So yeah, yep, exactly, sure exactly. And now how he is now, I guarantee you he could be the third option on a team that would have like yeah. he's better than he was then, a lot more polished as a player. For but sure. I have more beef with the front office and the coaching staff of the way. Yeah, I like this roster to an extent. I like the players on the roster. Jordan Poole, if you're not even gonna give him the opportunity to score 30 points, like they literally play him like 20 minutes a game. And as soon as they get down like 10 points, they're like all right, Corey Kispert and Koulibaly are going to play 35 minutes tonight. Like, oh, dude. they don't even play that much. Look at the game logs. Outside of Kuzma, they all play like 20 minutes. Like, You're talking I, about a guy that I am not a fan of, Bilal Koulibaly. You cannot sell <laughs> me on him. <laughs> you cannot. Like, he has I, really good defensive nights I've seen, but, like, there are nights when I'm like, I, I cannot watch him. Tim, I say the same, and I look at his numbers, and they're actually good. They're actually, like, really good. He's shooting 53% for the field, 42 from three, nine points, four rebounds, a steal, and a block. Like, But when I watch him, he looks awful. He's like a better Neil Aquina and Dante Axum. Like, he's a better version of that's, that player. That's a really good way to put it. He's definitely better than them. Like, he's he's going to have a good, a solid, like, role player career, in my opinion. I don't see star on Koulibaly. No, no, not at all. He basically got drafted in the top 10 because he's Wemben Yama's teammate in France. Literally. Yeah. literally. And... Yeah. I just I, I don't understand. I think Wes Unsell Jr. needs to get fired instantly, mm-hmm. like instantly. If you really watch their games, like I've sadly watched a few. Um, you I've bet, on, I've, I've bet yeah. on Kuzma a few times. I agree. So say watched a few games. <laughs> watch watch a few games. When I watch them, though, it hurts my head. Like what they're like what they're doing. They literally will play like Tyus Jones and Jordan Poole like 20 minutes a game. They're so obviously not trying to win games. It's so right. obvious. And it's like, why are you doing that to start the season? Like, you should right. at least try for the first couple months. Like, damn, I hate that. They're like, man, got to get Matas. Got to get another international guy on this wizard <laughs> team. <laughs> That's what we need. <laughs> we're, go- we're moving to Virginia. No one's going to care about us. And all, all I'm saying – the Bradley Beal 500 years are looking real sweet right now in Washington because lying. this You're team this team that. is like 
this team is like that. Uh, you remember the Nets right oh, after yeah. the Kevin Garnett, uh, oh, Paul yeah. Pierce, but somehow Pierce, they just yeah. won games and like never tanked. But like they had no future at that point after they traded uh, for all those guys and then they were gone and stuff. That's how this Wizards team is. Like they don't have a future either, though. Like they suck Agreed. and they don't have a future. Yeah, so it's, it's like that's not a good thing. That's not a good no, thing. Like, yeah. Your, your team's a bunch of, like, like your star player's like a 28-year-old Kuzma. And then, mm-hmm. I mean, like, <laughs> like it's just a bunch of guys that just I don't see ever being, like, a guy. And it's like Jordan Poole forgot how to play basketball when he got there. Yeah, because I think Tyus Jones yeah. would be, like, an awesome, like, backup point guard on a, on a he, playoff he's team. He's been an awesome backup point guard. Yeah. Playoff, and he's been an awesome starting point guard on a playoff team at points. Yeah, it's just I feel like once you go to Washington, you just forget how to play basketball. Yeah, yeah, that definitely happened to Jordan Poole. He got punched in the eye and forgot everything was going on. <laughs> he's, he is he has been awful. He's been yeah. absolutely awful. I, I think both of those teams lost that trade. Honestly, I think yeah, there's no I, way. I think oh, the Warriors yeah. because the Warriors would have been better off just hoping Poole turns into an All Star at some point yeah. than. They have a worse record now with Chris Paul, so it's like yeah, which is weird because when Paul and Curry are on the floor together, it looks decent. Sometimes, can, can we yeah. talk about that team real quick? That Dude, I was gonna say I did what ask about worst Memphis, team. They are the biggest them and the twenty one twenty two Lakers might be the biggest just shit shows I've ever seen. Uh, I think the court. Warriors, and I hate to say this for how good they've been for so long. I think that might be the most unwatchable league pass team. No, they're unwatchable right now. Yeah, like Pajemski or whatever is actually like productive, but Shout he's, out hor- Illinois. he's horrible to watch though. <laughs> <laughs> like, like his game is so just not smooth. It's so just erratic. And like, like he'll dribble the ball off his foot three times and then it rolls to the basket. He picks it up and makes a layup. Like that's right. like, like he's productive weirdly, but it's just, it's not smooth. Yeah, Wiggins like stinks all of a sudden. I don't know what happened to Wiggins. Yeah, Clay Thompson is just washed. The, mon- the Monstars went into their locker room, obviously, and yeah, obviously, yeah, uh, yeah. They, I, I think with Wiggins, brutal. like, like he, like he showed interest for like a year and a half in basketball and was pretty decent, but now he's like, <laughs> ah, we stink. I, I don't want to show any interest anymore. I was, I started All Star game. I won a title. I'm good. Yeah, you. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I can retire with my millions and I'll be fine. Yeah, uh, and, I got a rookie of the feel, year. Yep, yep. And the one I feel really bad for is Clay because I Clay's mind wants to be Clay, but Clay's body is not letting him be. Yeah, Clay. Parker's like, been saying this like, for a couple years. Like, yeah. like I, I, and I used to like Clay Thompson because I really thought that he was very a good compliment to to set or to Steph. But like, dude, he is just. Dude. And I mean, he's trying to will himself to be good. It just ain't there no more. And he turned like, down he fifty just, mil. I know. Oh my I god! I was just reading that article uh, yesterday, and, then, and now he's like, he's like, "Can I get that money back?" They're like, mm, mm. "Nah, fam." Have fun in Chicago. We're getting Kobe <laughs> yeah. White. Nah, nah do you, fam. Do you two remember last year when I said he was washed, and then he dropped fifty the next night? Yeah, I know. Like, <laughs> Clay, Clay, you're washed. Because I'm hoping he plays better. Because this is just yeah. tough to watch right now. It this is, is tough just... to watch. Like, he's averaging 15, but the only reason he's averaging 15 is because they're playing him. Like, he's unplayable. He looks like one of the worst players in the NBA right now. So, you say this, uh, was it the other night when they played Phoenix? He did not play in crunch time. Like, he did not play in crunch. He was on the bench. We can only play, like, 12 minutes. (laughs) Yeah, and you see what Steve Kerr said? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, he's like, I played the guys who felt like they were playing the most confident. And I was like, oh, goodness. Um so the one that. good thing is Kaminga looks like he's back. Like he looks yeah. like he's going to be a really good yeah. player again. So that's yeah. the one good thing with the Warriors. Because uh, you know now that they're not going to, there's no way Draymond plays this year, right? And definitely probably means the season. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I would. Can, I would venture to say yes. Can I? I can I say, say yes. something too? I think that it's also exposing something that I've always said. That it's just a fact. It's a lot harder as a small point guard to carry your team to wins. It's not you're not going to be able to do that as easily as like if LeBron had this roster of just, like he could still probably you know get a couple without yeah. West. He could you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's just Durant, it, like probably. it's hard. Durant could win some games with it. It's just I don't think Curry's as impactful as he once was eight years ago to winning. If that makes sense, yeah. like I think he's still 
elite as hell. He's still a top seven player in the league. I just don't think he's capable of just carrying this roster to wins at this point. And he looks frustrated yeah, and you can, as hell out Yeah, there. I was going to say, yeah, you can see his frustrate. You can see his frustration when he's out on the court, man. Because when you're used to greatness like that and mm-hmm. you've got guys around you that aren't playing to that level and they're not in spots where they're supposed to be spots and he's used to catching the ball in a certain spot and guys cutting and doing like when that ain't going on and you're used to that, like it, that's a hard pill to swallow because he's still playing at an elite level. Oh, but it's yeah. a hard pill to swallow when Soda Popinski is running around trying to get open and it ain't it ain't happening. You know what I All mean? Right. So it, it's D'Angelo tough. Russell and Rui Hachimura, two firsts for Steph Curry. Send it in. Send it in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. D Lo back on the Warriors. D Lo back on the Warriors. I will say this too. We haven't even talked about the heavyweight champion of the world. Uh, Draymond Green. We haven't even talked oh, about man. him yet. Like, yeah, I don't know Dude, what's that, going on yeah. with him. It's like he, I, this is I, what he did. People forget this is what he did when they sucked when Curry was out three years ago. He yeah. just makes an excuse to get ejected because he he doesn't like to play. I don't when feel like playing. when yeah. they're not winning. Yeah. He doesn't like to yeah. play. Yeah, he yeah he's dude. That's a, that's a man. Like <laughs> I don't even know how to how to explain it. Like it's like it's so. Like, it's just so off the wall. Like, I couldn't – even when I saw it, I was like, this dude really is just trying to get kicked out the league for the year. Like, he, like he's trying. He's yeah, like, oh, this no. season's a wash. Let me punch <laughs> this guy. Get, get up out of here. <laughs> oh, he's definitely trying right now. So, last thing before we go to our flashback segment, um, Joss coming back, looks like, next week or so. Memphis is 6-17 and 17 going into tonight. Uh, tonight we're recording. Oh. There's no way he can like. I think he'll be fun to watch again, but with how bad that team is and how things just don't seem to align, they're six and a half out of the ten spot for the last play in. There's no yeah. way they can make something up with him, right? There's just no way. No, and I think this shows how big of a loss Tyus Jones was for yeah, this team. Yeah, agree. Because they, yeah. they, it's yeah. the same roster, and Desmond Bain's gotten better. Jaron Jackson Jr.'s gotten better, so. They shouldn't be this much worse. But yeah, Jaron Jackson Jr. against every, everyone not named Anthony Davis is, like, incredible. Yeah, he gets yep. scared of Anthony Davis for some reason. Yeah. I, I will say this, too, though. Like, I've been saying their role players outperform who they are these last yeah. couple years. It was going to catch mm-hmm. up. Like, I'm sorry, you can't you can't convince me Conchar and Aldama are elite sixth and seventh mans on your team. Like, no, I they're great think- fantasy basketball players. <laughs> <laughs> like I just I think their bench needs a revamp, honestly. Yeah. And I well, mean Tyre Williams Brooks, has been so nice. Like, Dylan Brooks Dylan, even Dylan Brooks outplayed as where he's supposed to be. I mean, I I didn't think he was great, but he was good for them in spots. Like Exactly. Yeah. And Dylan Brooks, people were acting like he was gonna go play for the Shanghai Sharks. I know. So he's been a really productive player on a good team this year. So it's right. like Yeah. All right, so Let's go ahead and get to our flashbacks. I mean, I figure since Ben was joining us, we had to do a little Pacers talk here. Uh, oh, right. By the way, just did my first G League game the other day. Shout out to Mad Ants for the hospitality. Dude, uh, isn't it fun? It's yeah, a lot of fun. Ben really stirred that relationship for us. And, um, man, it was so cool. Like, I got to talk to Jordan Bell after the game, and he was the nicest dude. Just super awesome. Yeah. Lone Brooks' old college teammate, actually. So, yep. Um, Asked my answered my question about if uh, he ever talked to cash considerations. So really appreciate that. <laughs> um, was awesome. And the game was cool. Uh, dude, there was so there was like four or five former NBA players in this game. It was kind of neat. So like uh Wendian was playing for the herd, the Bucks affiliate. Drew Timmy was playing for them. Um, spoiler, he's never gonna play in the NBA. <laughs> like, there's there's gotta be like 10 oh, injuries. Oh yeah. I I, yeah. I I think we said that when we talked about that, Tim. We said Timmy had no shot. We were like Shibwe will find his way in the league because he can do one thing better than anybody in the world. We yeah. said that. We were like, he can do one thing better than anybody. Um, but uh, Alfred Payton. So like, you know, when it's a bunch of guys, it's guys who's been in the league playing guys who haven't been in the league. It's just like super easy. All they did yeah. was run like this high screen where Jordan Bell would set the screen for Payton and slip to the rim. And there was just no stopping. And I was like, this is kind of fun to watch though. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, thank you to the Mad Ants. We definitely love going up there. We'll be up there for more for sure. Um, but Tim, I wa- did yeah. you ask, did you ask Bell? Like, uh, did you ask him any questions like about trying to get back in the league or anything? Not necessarily, but um, 
I'm working, I was just I'm working on potentially having him be a guest on NBA Friday in the near future. Oh, so oh, that would be cool. we're working the deets out. Um, I don't want to get too excited about it, but I have sent out the offer and I have gotten the, I will ask and let you know. So that's as far as I got at the moment for our listeners, because right, awesome, I have thousand percent want to ask him about game one of the 18 finals because he was on that Warriors team. Yeah, just yeah. He also oh, yeah. he was a rotational piece. He was a rotational yeah. piece. He played like twelve minutes in that game. Yeah, I was about to say he probably played. Um, so I want to bring up the like what Paul George became from where he was in his injury to this because I don't know how many people were like obviously people know he's awesome and Parker and I talk about it all the time. We think he's the best part in the Clippers. Um, I wish he played on a team that actually wanted to win a championship instead of just a bunch of old dudes who want to play together. Um, mm-hmm. and just sell, you know, sell a new arena. I thought that was so funny that Pacers fans were like, maybe he'll come back. Like he's not leaving Los Angeles for Indianapolis. Nope. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. He's got that podcast going. He's got all kinds of stuff going on out there. Dude, he ain't leaving LA. Yeah. Not a chance. But when he first came in, so he was one of Larry's, la- he was one of Larry Bird's last draft picks. He was mm-hmm. in the John Wall Boogie Cousins draft. Mm-hmm. He might go number one overall if you redraft that draft. He's That's something I got to look into. He definitely 100% goes number one. Yeah. yeah. It would either be him or John Wall. So or he's Wall, definitely. Yeah. And one's in the league and one's not. Yeah, so. yeah. Fun fact there's only two players left of that draft class, which is just crazy because there's like 15 of the 09 class left. But the 010, it's just him and Gordon Hayward. That's it at this Pretty point. Wild. Oh, wow. That's wild. Yeah. Um. So. Obviously, his rookie year doesn't play a whole lot. Still puts up like eight points a game, playing like 16 minutes. Wasn't playing much. Mm-hmm. Second year kind of become, starts to show what he can be. Third year is awesome. That's like the start of the like Heat Pacers rivalry mm-hmm. in the playoffs when it's like they're just going at it every 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 postseason. Um, and then, you know they they fight. Ben, you can attest this better than we can. Obviously. Absolutely, they fight like hell in those Heat series. Yeah. Yeah. And then just like don't have enough in game seven because LeBron yeah. does, does LeBron game seven things. LeBron is LeBron. I was going to say, like, if LeBron wasn't LeBron, we'd be there, but he's incredible. Then breaks his leg and like, don't YouTube it if you haven't. Oh, seen yeah, it. don't. Look don't. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, comes back that year. Way late, he plays like the last eight games, mm-hmm. but just kind of gets rhythm, changes his number. Saw what he was doing there. Um, and then the freaking next year he comes out and he's the best he's ever been. Yep. And what we've seen since then, if you look at that last year in Oklahoma City before he goes to the Clippers, he's an MVP candidate. He was incredible. You know, that's the team that lost to Dame on the on the uh, the walk off shot. And yep. you know, it's the only reason to watch the Clippers if you're interested in watching entertaining basketball. And you look at that team that lost to the Suns in the Western Conference Finals where they before they played the Bucks. Paul George is incredible in that playoff. Yes, he he's was unbelievable. So Ben, for you. From beginning to now, watching PG, you know, before the leg injury, mm-hmm. what he's done since then, what has this like trajectory been like for you to see what he's done as a Pacers fan? Um, well, I mean, of course it hurts because <laughs> I want to be sure. a Pacer for life. But um, to see where he started and then from the leg injury to where he is now, man, like it's, I'm, I'm, I'm super excited for the guy. I always watching, I always love watching him play. Um, he's a he's still dynamic. He's still athletic. He still does all the things that makes him an all star. It's it's been a lot of fun. I'm not. I mean, I can't hate on Paul George, dude. He's been he's right. been lights out. Um, you know, even in a little stint at OKC, then going to the Clippers, like he's he's been incredible. Um, I I wish he would get on a team that was more concerned about winning and not just bringing in guys just to bring in guys to have fun. Yeah. Um, I would really love to see him on like a, I mean, I'm not going to say the Clippers on a contender, but I'd really like to see him on a team a that, I, I mean, I mean, yeah, I was just trying to be nice, I guess, but, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, uh, like anything I'd really like happen. to see him, right. Anything can happen, but I, I'd really like to see him on a team that is going to be fighting there, uh, you know, when we get here next summer to get into the finals. Cause I think that's when you see the best of Paul George. Um, because play he playoff P man, like that guy puts on shows. Um, so, but no, it's, it's been cool to see, especially seeing that he was a, a, a pacer draft pick, a guy that played for my, my favorite team, um, and watch him overcome that adversity to see where he is now. Um, I don't know what people were thinking, thinking that he would come back. He's not ever coming back. LA's 
LA is where he needs to be. Well, not where he needs to be, but where he's having the most success. But I mean, if he um, wants to stay at the crypt when the Clippers, move, I mean, you know, get a yeah. locker. Right. Yeah, I'm fine that, with that, that. Yeah. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. So, but overall, dude, I like, I, he's one of my favorite players. I uh, love watching him play. And um, I mean, yeah, especially after, you know, doing what he did and coming back and, you know, nothing but love for, for PG and, and how he plays the game. And I, like I said, I just wish he was on a team that cared about being in it in the end and not just having my buddies play together. You know what I mean? So. Parker and I talk all the time, and this is more. This segment is more about like just his how he got to where he's at. But Parker and I laugh about this all the time, where it's like if you look at that Clippers team, it's like Kawhi ball dominant, Westbrook ball dominant, mm-hmm. James Harden ball dominant. Like Paul George is the one guy that's not and yep. should be because he's the best and player on that team. And I, I feel like this is what I was telling Tim. I feel like he's getting pushed to the side. You look at his recent numbers, like he was averaging like 27 points a game the first eight games Mm -hmm. or whatever before Harden got there. And then recently he's been, you know, not scoring as much. And like, I think he should, He like if you watch them, he goes a lot of possessions without touching the ball. Yeah, they like put it as a decoy in the corner. Yeah, and it's like, it's like you just watch Harden and Kawhi run a two-man game pretty much. With Zubac. Yep. And I think him and Westbrook, who are the two that, you know, are out there Playing their ass off, caring the most, get pushed to the side for Harden and yep. Kawhi, and I don't, I don't know. I just, I don't think the way it's being handled right now is right over there. Um, first thing that comes to mind with Paul George, the smoothest basketball player of all time. Like I could watch Paul George highlights all day. His yeah. bag like, is his bag. It's is it's ridiculous. It's Kyrie, yeah. but six nine, six ten. Like it's <laughs> yeah. disgusting. Um, and I, I mean, if you really like, he just really changed his game. Like he went. Like, if you watch Paul George now, he shoots – he hardly drives at the rim. And that's been like that, yep. like, his whole prime. Because, honestly, his prime has been after the injury. Yeah, He's been better sure. since after yep. the injury. Yep. Like, his best years have been after it. Um, and, I mean, you know, a lot of the guys that had those just gruesome-looking injuries, too, really didn't recover. Yeah. Sean well. Livingston, yeah. big one. Yep. yep. Other, Hayward. If, that had something like that was Dak in the NFL. But, I mean, he's yeah. a poor- it's not all about his legs running and stuff. Um, and I don't know. I think uh, Paul George just had a hell of a career, and he's definitely a first ballot Hall of Famer. And uh, when he retires, he might be top 75. Yeah. Eight yeah. time, eight time All Star, six time All NBA. Might be nine time after this year. Definitely yeah. could be nine time. Yeah. Um, but I'm just saying, you know, if Paul George wants to like looks around, he's like, this sucks. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Come wear the purple and gold, buddy. I think him and LeBron would have been disgusting together. As they were supposed to be together. I know. It was supposed to happen. Imagine him, LeBron, and AD. That would be a – That would be sick. You almost had Kyrie Irving as a pacer. Do you realize that? I know. I know. Yeah, but that would have been sick, dude. Having LeBron, PG, and AD. Oh, my gosh. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. I think the coolest thing, and like Parker said, is just that his first few years in the league before the injury, he was just like the super athletic dude who just was yep. like, you know, was like awesome to watch. Don't get me wrong. Like he was in a dunk contest. Yep. Like, yep. He uh, was in a dunk contest. I forgot about that. And then now he's become this perimeter shooter. And well, like kind of what Parker said too about, so kind of piggyback off that. When these guys had these injuries that still play, look around the league Sean Livingston, Derek Rose, Gordon Hayward. They become a shell of themselves. At Kevin 90, Ware in college. Yeah, he never... 90, 98% of the time, they become a shell of themselves. He got better and yep. became like an elite NBA player, a top 15 player in the league. Um, well, I think because he's not as vocal about it, I would guarantee that guy's one of the hardest workers in the league because yeah. you don't yeah. get that damn skilled and your footwork that smooth and your handle everything like that not working your ass off so there's yeah i guarantee he probably worked his ass off and really i was at his last pacers game really were yeah. you really when they got swept by the Cavs. Mm. yeah that was probably was his like, best year as a pacer too like i was at like game four individual. yeah yeah man it was um it was cool watching him. I was also at the game. I don't know if you guys remember this. This is like totally pulling something out of a bike. So his it was his last year at the Pacers. It was a regular season game. They played the Bulls. So this is the year Wade is playing on the Bulls, to put in context. Um, 
He got ejected for a game for kicking a ball into the stands. I do remember. I was at that game. <laughs> Were you yeah. really? <laughs> yeah. Um, I do remember that. <laughs> that was my first time I ever went to an NBA game. Was that night? So. Yeah. Uh, that's a good. Just one. awesome. Just awesome. Uh, also, also, I didn't mention like with Paul George. I mean, in my opinion, he's a number one with a number two's mentality. In my opinion, yeah. like in terms of like yeah. just being assertive all the time, like he's. He's talented enough to be the best player on a championship team and be a top five player in the world. I just don't think he's always had the assertiveness in game to always be that aggressive all the time. But we've seen it. In, I mean, he almost took the Clippers to the finals by himself when Kawhi got hurt. He was yeah. Yeah, him and Terrence that might have yeah. been my most fun watching a player other than LeBron, like watching him in those ser- in those two series. He was awesome, and he was absolutely torching the Suns. Uh, I remember that step back he had on Chris Paul where he snatched his ankles, and then I mean. Dude has the most ankle breakers ever for somebody above 6'3". <laughs> Literally. Yeah, agreed. And he's way above 6'3". That's the thing. So, PG, we salute you. I love your sneakers. Also, They're also, longevity. Longevity. He's had great longevity, too. He's yes, 33 he and he's still in his prime. Awesome. He hasn't really yeah. gotten any worse. Shout out coming from Fresno State. A full, no one really looks at for basketball to be where he's at. So, um, love, yeah, love PG. Go be a Laker. All right. So, <laughs> that being said, um, I just want to see him win the title, okay? And um, so, that being said, we I have... can see him on the Lakers with like forty-three-year-old LeBron and Bronny and Bryce yep, and Anthony yep. Davis. <laughs> I'm because because genuinely, I'm I will not be shocked if LeBron is still an All NBA player at age like forty-four. I at this point, I'm not ruling it out. Right, I'm not ruling it out. Yet. What do you roll out with him at this I'm, point? I'm there's not. Nothing, I'm not. There's nothing to roll out. Like how he played in the in season tournament, knowing something was on the line for not him but for his teammates. Yep. You're like, all right, dude. Like. You can't tell me he's not a top five player anymore. You just can't. I'm you not can't listen tell to me it. he's not a top three player, in my opinion. I would say Jokic and Embiid. Jokic and Embiid and Giannis, and then I wouldn't put anybody else above him, honestly. I would not, not Luka, not Tatum, not Curry. No. Well, it's good opinion. you say that because now we're going to do Parker's draft this week for this starting five. And it is LeBron James teammates who have never played in an all star game. So everyone get out your basketball right. reference pages because there is uh, a lot. So this is going to be a lot of fun because there is a ton of like really solid role players that he's had throughout his career. Um, there's also, we, we talk all the time about all the dudes he played with and they were washed. Um, you know, the Ben Wallace's, the Shaquille O'Neal's, um, those guys, the Antoine Jameson's, things like that. That were just not good when they played, you know, they were not who they were anymore when they played with LeBron. So those guys do not count because they played technically played in all star games. So here we're going to try to draft our starting five of non all star LeBron teammates. So Parker, since Ben is our guest, I wanted to get you do we do, do you still take the first pick? Do you get the first pick to Ben? How are we dish doing it now? off to Ben? I'll go second. All right. All right. So I got the wraparound. Oh, so Ben, gosh. we snake drafted. So. All-time LeBron teammates to not make an all-star appearance? Yeah. Oh, man, that's tough. Uh, By the way, the uh, Bulls are beating the Heat right now in crunch time. I know. Oh, they were wow. up by like 40 earlier or something, or 30. They were up by a ton <laughs> earlier. It was like 35 to 8 at one point. Uh, that's <laughs> Feel free to use your uh, basketball reference. That's all right. I was going to say, yeah, I'm I am going to have to – let's see here. I'm going to go Miami Heat, and I'm going to go point guard Mario Chalmers. Oh, that's a fun first pick. All right, we're going Mario Chalmers. I like that for a first pick. All right, I'm going to go – all right, I'm going to go with – former six man of the year, the greatest 2K player of all time. I'm going with J.R. Smith. <laughs> I, I, JR. I, I would have taken him if you didn't. So Yeah, I'm going with J.R. Smith. Yeah. All Probably right, my well, favorite I'm, role player ever. Same here. I'm going with – I got two. So I'm going to start with one of the main reasons they won the 2016 title, Richard Jefferson. Okay. Um, Ooh, okay. Kevin Love has that concussion. He steps right in, and he is awesome in that game on defense, like just suffocating on defense. Also an all-NBA third-team player when he was younger. 
All NBA, but never an All Star. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. O- Olympian, never an All Star. Yeah, uh, he, he's definitely one of the best non All Stars of all time. Him and CJ McCollum. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Mike Conley was on that list till just a couple years ago, and he was like a 17th alternate for an All Star team. Yeah. Uh, so, all right. So I, I got Richard Jefferson to start out, and I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Alex Caruso. All right. Nice. All right, so with my second pick here, I'm going to go with Kyle Kuzma. Uh, there you go. That's, that's my pick. I mean, I don't – his stats are good enough to be an all-star this year, but they have three wins, so he probably won't right. make it this year either. Unless he's like a 25th <laughs> alternate. Yeah, yeah he, he might make it as an alternate, definitely, but not right, ben. So, Ben, you got two. Oh, gosh. All right, I am going to go with – Laker teammate JaVale McGee. Nice. Nice. JaVale. I'm going deep. Love it. I'm going I'm going deep in the bag here. And I can't remember if he was all-star or not. Michael Beasley? Was not an all-star. Was not an all-star. There you go. He did average 20 a couple years though on the Timberwolves, but yeah, yeah. I don't think he made an all-star. He did. Time. They drafted him to be Dwayne Wade's running mate, and then they got LeBron. He was traded the next year. <laughs> that is funny. All right, so I got Kuzma, and I got J.R. Yeah, Smith. Yeah, he got out. This team is definitely going to party a little bit. Um, <laughs> Get the heady ready. Yep. Um, I think I'm going to go with a – all right, this is an interesting pick. We're going with Greg Oden at center. Oh. Hey. <laughs> I'm going with Greg Oden. He was a teammate on the Heat, I think, his last year. On the he heat, was. Have you ever heard him talk year, about that team? 2013-14. You ever he hear started Oden at Oden? center for a while, too. I've, like uh, Oden was on a podcast one time, and someone was like, uh, what do you say to people when they say that you just got on the team to ride LeBron's coattails to a championship? He goes, and? <laughs> <laughs> so right. he knows. He knows. Shaq Ben didn't go with him as an Ohio State guy. but uh, I know. All right, so I know. I got two. So, so far, I've got Richard Jefferson. I've got Alex Caruso. Um, I'm going to go my guy, AR-15, Austin Reeves. Oh, that's a good-ass pick. Damn, that I forgot Austin one. Reeves. Yeah, that's Bucket a good getter. I, I Bucket take getter. Him. Yeah, exactly. And then I'm going to go LeBron's best with shooters, right? So I got Reeves. Caruso's an okay shooter. Jefferson has, like, it was the three and was the five points a game, three-pointer and a dunk guy. Um I'm going to go also from that Cavs team. I'm going to go with Channing Fry. Channing Fry Ooh. Didn't play in the finals, but did he play like hell in that Pacers series that I discussed earlier? Yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, So I got J.R. Smith, I got Kuzma, and I got Greg Oden. All right, I'm trying to think of who I want here. I'm trying to think of who I want here. Okay, so I want like a wing. I want a wing. I'm going to go with Josh Hart. There you go. Josh Hart. So I'm going to go with there. Solid ass. Just any team wants a Josh Hart player. <laughs> yeah, I agree. It's true. Yeah, anybody. That is true. That's very true. You got two here. All right. Uh, let me see. I'm going to go with another one of all-time favorite teammates, Anderson Verja. Nice, nice. You're looking to pick up some flagrants? Okay. Heck yeah, baby. I, dang, you took 10. Oh, another another favorite of his, Matthew Delavadova. <laughs> that's a good I'll, pick. Yeah, that's a good pick. All right. Um, so so ben start, Ben's five were... Hold Chalmers. On. Good pick. Della Vadova. Verjao. Michael Beasley. And Michael Beasley. That's a that's a fun blacktop team. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's like Definitely a team you see at the Drew League. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. Some guys that like in open runs are disgusting. Right, so Parker's got his last pick. All right, I'm going with an old ass LeBron teammate. I'm going with Larry Hughes, the second best player on the 07 finals. He was oh, on my he board. Was. He was on my board. <laughs> I'm going with Larry Hughes. Uh, he's one of the first like people I remember watching basketball. So I was yeah, a kid. I love Larry Hughes. 
Yeah. Sam I used to like him in 2K, and I used to like him in, uh, what's it called, Tim? The, uh, what's the NBA, NBA Street Live? Volume 2. He was in oh, NBA yeah. Street Volume 2, too. He was. You're right. All right, so I've got Caruso, Reeves, Richard Jefferson, Channing Fry. I need a point guard. Oh, duh. How did we miss this? Lonzo Ball. Oh, yeah. That's a really good pick. That's a really yeah. good pick. That's a really good pick. I forgot That's about really Lonzo. Yeah. So... That's I got really like a Cavs pick. Lakers combo team. You guys yeah, with a little Heat really Cavs Lakers trio. So, um, that's a fun honorable draft. mention. Honorable mention: Iman Shumpert. Iman Shumpert. Uh, he I was on was, my board. I was thinking about Shumpert. I really wanted to take Dewan Wagner, not because yeah, he, because I just loved him at Memphis. Yeah, loved him. Uh, was he the number one player in the country in high school too? Number one player in the country yes, in high was. school ended up going fifth overall in his draft mm -hmm. and then had like a heart condition i think his third year because he played two years with lebron is that dj's dad or uncle yep. it's his dad right yeah I was about to say his dad. It's his dad, right yeah so that'll be yet another guy that when he gets to the league lebron will have played with with or with against dad and, uh, and he might play he dad. might end up playing the way he's sliding right now he might end up being a late first round pick to the lakers seriously you never know yeah you're you're probably right um all right, so we're going to do a first year then. So, Ben, what we do is um, we, we rotate who selects the draft category. So, oh, you get to pick our draft category for next week. Oh, gosh. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to. And you're welcome to join for it, obviously. Yeah. I'm going to say, have you guys done anything with Shaq? Uh, no, no, we, we, no, the only thing we draft. did was we had a segment we talked about when he got traded to Miami and Nate got really drunk and turned to when he got traded to Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I would like to see all time Shaq teammates. We can do all-star or non-all-star. Oh, you well, choose. you know who would be my who would be my number one if I had. To oh, yeah. Oh, like that's, yeah. A Anthony. Yeah. Anthony. Yeah. So next week's episode is kind of shaped to be nice. That's a good draft. Um, flashback segment is going to be all time Christmas games. Oh, so just got to find a current topic and we'll be we'll be set. It's going to be a fun episode. Yeah. Oh, well, Draymond's out of the league, so we won't have anything there. So <laughs> we're going to have to dig deep, guys. <laughs> we just talk about the Warriors shit show right now. Uh, right. Literally, <laughs> as we're talking about that, just got a push notification from uh, our friends at Sleeper that uh, the, the Warriors are starting Kuminga and Podzeminski tonight, and Wiggins is moving to the bench. Oh, man. Steve Kerr really trying to shake it up. Yeah. Things are going great in San Francisco. I feel like he's trying to like just piss Wiggins off, but I think Wiggins just doesn't care. Right. He doesn't care. Uh, yeah. I, like, I told you know you. what I mean? It I feel a... like he's trying to motivate him, but I think yeah. he doesn't care. There was a year and a half where he got really motivated, helped him win a title, got an all-star, and then that was it. He was like, ah, I, I, I'm good. I, I did everything I have came out to do. Now I'm just going to go back to being a mediocre basketball player. Yeah, literally. <laughs> I mean, he still plays good defense, but his offense has just evaporated. He looks like he has yep. no confidence out there either. Yeah. I'm, like, thinking ahead. So, who would the first three picks be? Obviously, so LeBron, Kobe, Penny, would that be the first three picks? For Shaq? Yeah. Oh, yeah, no. absolutely. Uh, or D-Wade. I mean, Penny or Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, D-Wade. I mean, I, if, it's, if it's all time, you're just taking your best player. This isn't – if it's not – Obviously, we're just building our team, so it doesn't matter. But if it's like actually accurate, it's definitely D Wade over. Yeah, Brady. you're right. You're right. You're right. I didn't think about D Wade. I mean, he yeah. won a Finals MVP with him, so that makes a yeah. ton of sense. It's gonna be a fun one. Oh, I'm excited. Yeah. But with that being said, we're gonna go wrap up this week's edition of NBA Friday, brought to you by the Riverfront and Riverfront U, as always. So be sure to give us a moment to give us a nice little subscription on YouTube if you're finding us for the first time. If you're listening to us on your podcast app, Detroit, give us a nice, solid subscription and a five-star. Um, as always, patreon.com says Riverfront Cincy. If you decide to go to an NBA game over Christmas, go to SeatGeek, 20 bucks off, use code Riverfront, and we'll we'll get you some free money on that game, on the, to go to that game of choice as well. 
Uh, or if you want to go see some of the college teams, like, oh, I don't know, the team that just won the Crosstown Shootout, baby. On behalf of Parker and Ben, this is Tim Daniel. See you guys next week.